Hello and welcome to a new jazz lesson. In this video we will play a 12 bar blues in C. And we will learn some very useful techniques to play a thrilling blues solo with the right hand. My name is Oliver Preen, by the way, and I hope you like this little blues solo, because in a minute I will show you how to do this. We will discover that this solo is actually based on, on some very simple techniques. So all this are going to be really fun. Hopefully, you will explore some new stuff you can add to your improvisation style when playing the blues. Now, put your hand on the keys like this. Here we got four notes, the A note, the C note, the D note, and the E flat note. With the C note in the bass, the hand grip sounds like this. Between our thumb and index finger we have a minor third. And we got three stepwise notes uh, much closer to each other in the top of our hand grip. Minor third and stepwise notes. Okay, now we move our thumb to the um, to the note a half step above the fourth finger the E note, like this. And we make the exact same hand grip. We got our minor third interval and our three stepwise notes in the top. Now let's play a little solo on the C7 chord, using the two positions of our hand grip. We play the C7 chord in the left hand. Now with the right hand we will now play our hand grip. The hand grip has two positions. We can place our index finger on the C note and make the hand grip. And we can move our thumb up a half step from the fourth finger to the E note and play our hand grip from there. Okay, now we will find an easy way to locate the positions of our hand grip. Look at your index finger. This finger should either be placed on the keynote C, or we can place our index finger on the perfect fifth compared to the keynote C, the G note. So. The positions for our index finger are either the key note or the fifth, right? So these two positions are very easy to remember. When I improvise, I use the index finger as a kind of mental pointer, the key note the fifth. Okay, our 12 bar blues contains other chords than the C7 chord. So what about the next chord? 
the F7 chord. How do we improvise on that chord? Well, that's easy. We simply just transpose our positions of our hand grip to the F tonality. So where should we place our hand grip? Well, look at the index finger, our mental pointer. We simply just place the index finger on the keynote of the current chord, the F note. And we make our hand grip. And we can place our index finger on the fifth compared to the F note. And that's uh, this, the C note. And we make our hand grip. So when playing solo on the F7 chord, we can place our hand grip here and here. Now let's try to improvise over the C7 chord and the F7 chord. C7 F7 When playing the C7 chord, we place our right hand index finger on the keynote C or a fifth above on the G note. When playing uh, the F7 chord, we place our index finger on the keynote F and a fifth above on the C note. C7 F7 Okay, what about the last chord, the G7 chord? How do we improvise on that chord? Maybe you have figured it out. We just place our index finger on the G note, the key note. And we make our hand grip. And we can place our index finger on the fifth, the D note. And we make our hand grip. So. On the G7 chord, we can play the hand grip at these two positions. Index finger on G. Index finger on D. Okay, let's try to play through the entire chord progression. C7. F7 C7 F7 Notice we play in a rubato style with rhythmic freedom Later on, we will improvise with a fixed tempo. But for now, this is a very good way to practice the positions of our hand grip. We can just dwell upon a single chord. Learn the positions of our hand grip. And when we are ready, we go to the next chord. Nice and easy. Do not rush through this exercise. Take your time and discover the opportunities of the hand grip, one chord at a time. Okay, 
Let's try to play through the 12 bar chord progression in a fixed tempo. Mm, what about 69 beats per minute? In the left hand I will play a simple walking bass by the way. I have written down the basic notes for that walking bass if you should be interested. I will paste a link in the description below. In another lesson I also explain the basic techniques of this walking bass. I will paste a link to that lesson as well. Ok, here we go. Now look at the right hand. Notice with the hand grip technique we are forced to use the same piano fingering no matter where on the keys we are and what position we play. And we can take advantage of that property. Being familiar with the hand grip, we can easily repeat phrases and motifs at different places on the keys. So a single motif can be played several places on the keys using the exact same piano fingering. So we reuse a simple technique on the entire register. When mastering this hand grip, our improvisation gets easier. We don't have to think about scales and other theory stuff while playing. Music does not have to be advanced and difficult. Actually, we need to free our mind from complicated thoughts when performing. We need to do things as simple as possible. A simple improvisation is often the best improvisation. Okay, very soon we will talk some theory and make some reflections. When improvising using these hand grips, I think it's really exciting to stop playing for a while and find out the theory behind all this. What are we actually playing? The next section will for sure be illuminating, so stay tuned. So, what scale are we playing when using our hand grip at the different positions? Well, Having C as our keynote, we have these notes. And these notes, right? The A note we have twice, so we remove the lower A, the lower A note. Well, then we have this scale. In a previous lesson, we learned about the Mixolydian scale. I will paste a link to that lesson in the description below. Now here we have the C Mixolydian scale. And we have learned that this Mixolydian scale has a so-called avoid note, the F note. This F note makes a harsh clash against the major third note in the C chord. So. If we want to avoid this class, we must leave out the F note. And notice, sometimes we actually deliberately want to make a dissonant class. That's why the term uh, avoid is wrong, I think. But that's another story. In our context, we actually want to avoid the avoid note. So, we leave out the F note. In the previous lesson, we also learned that with succeed we can add a blue note to the Mixolydian scale, the minor third. So we can play both major 
and minor. So this distorted mixolydian scale is great when improvising blues on the seven chords. And if we use our hand grip, we can play this scale automatically without thinking about looking up the scale while playing. We just place our index finger on the key note and the fifth. And we automatically have all the notes in our hand. And furthermore, we avoid playing the notes stepwise up and down like this. This way of playing a solo often happens when thinking too much in scales when playing. Then we just play the scale up and down and we have a boring solo like this. But when we split up the scale by using the hand grip, we automatically play small motifs and phrases. The hand grip invites us to break up the scale and to play melodies and licks in a natural way. The hand grip simply makes it easier for us to play music. Okay, very soon we will expand and alter our hand grip slightly. These small changes can make our solo even more thrilling. So stay tuned. Here we have our hand grip with our index finger on the C note. Now let's add the pinky to the hand grip. From the fourth finger, the E flat note, we go up a major third interval to the G note and we got this five finger hand grip. Between the first two fingers we got the minor third interval and between the two last fingers we got the major third interval. And In the middle of our hand grip we got this stepwise movement. We can play our expanded hand grip at the same positions as before. So, on the C7 chord we can play our expanded hand grip with the index finger on the key note and we can play the hand grip with the index finger on the fifth note. Let's combine the two positions of the hand grip and play a little solo on the C7 chord. Well, this works great, don't you think? And let's do the other chords as well. So everything is as before. We simply just place our index finger on the key note or the fifth of the Qn chord. The only difference is that we now occasionally add the pinky to our hand grip. Right now we do the rubato exercise, by the way. So we play in a free rhythmic mode. In this way we can practice the hand grip without being stressed by a fixed speed. Later on we will turn on the metronome again. Okay, if the fourth finger blue note is a black key like the E flat note, we can slide this E flat note up a half step to the major third E note like this. Well, that's a pretty cool trick, I think. Keeping the C note in the bass, we can also do the trick when the index finger is on the G note. Then we slide the B flat note up to the B note. I think doing this when the, the index finger is on the fifth, the G note, is a little more dared. But in the right situations, it, it also adds great color to our sound. 
Well, it's all up to us what we feel for. Now, let's start the metronome again. And we will try to include all the stuff we have learned in this lesson. Making exercises to a metronome is a really good thing to do. We will learn to make the blues in a steady speed. But if you're not ready for this, don't worry. Then you just have to make the rubato exercise some more to be familiar with the hand grip. You can also skip the walking bass for a while, but keep the metronome going. Now we just play the key notes in the bass. But we still improvise in a steady speed. Now just fool around with your right hand. Discover and explore small motifs that you like. Now let's also play the walking bass. Okay, now let me bring you many huge thanks for all the donations I have received lately. With these donations, it has actually been possible for me to cut down the hours at my regular daytime work. This means that I'm now able to use more time making music lessons. So thanks a lot, my friends. I really, really appreciate it. So feel free to support my work with a dollar or two on PayPal or Patreon. But important. Don't feel obligated to donate anything. I like my music and teaching stuff to be freely available. Just by watching my lessons and maybe give me a like, you give me all the support I need. The best and warm regards from Oliver Prehn.